Welcome back to the Sage Audio channel. Today we'll delve into what might be the best plugin-based mastering chain available. We'll cover the eight inserts used in this chain, explain what they're doing, why they're in this order, and listen to how they impact the sound of the music step by step. So if you're looking for a great signal chain, or you simply want to compare yours to another, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and stick around for the full video. But first, if you're an artist, engineer, or producer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. All you have to do is set up an account, upload the song, and we do the rest. Right off the bat, it's important to recognize that there is no absolute best mastering signal. Subjective, as well as multiple technical factors like genre, frequency response, the mix's dynamic range, and a lot of other variables will affect how to master a track. However, there are some signal chains that work incredibly well and can be adjusted to fit just about any circumstance. The signal chain that I'll be describing here is one of, if not the best plugin signal chain that I've come across after experimenting with various plugins. Collectively and in this particular order, the tone, impressiveness, balance, and overall enjoyability of the music is increased dramatically, in my opinion. So with that said, let's start off with our first insert, which is the FabFilter Pro-Q3 used for subtractive equalization. The FabFilter Pro-Q3 allows for subtle colorless equalization. This makes it a great first insert in a mastering signal chain. With it, you can decrease the amplitude of various aspects of the signal to balance it out before any amplification occurs. Because this plugin is mid-side, you can attenuate some of the side image to cut out low frequencies and make them mono. Furthermore, you can cut out some of the mid frequencies below 15 Hz to give yourself some more headroom. Lastly, I used a narrow dynamic band to attenuate some of the sibilance of the vocal. These settings, in combination with a natural phase setting, gave me a great foundation for all of the subsequent steps. Let's take a listen to it. The second insert is Soothe 2, which I used for de and compression. Soothe 2 is an interesting and unique plugin. It attenuates frequencies dynamically and based on the incoming signal. Now this can be used during mastering to control sibilance and other harsh frequencies in an incredibly accurate way. Whereas a multiband compressor would attenuate unrelated frequencies, as would most de Soothe 2 attenuates just the relevant parts of the signal. Using its EQ-like display, I limit the processing just to the higher aspects of the frequency spectrum. I use the soft setting, as well as limit the amount of attenuation occurring. Furthermore, I use two times over sampling and the ultra mode to minimize phase cancellation and aliasing. Lastly, I increase the sharpness to make the attenuation more precise. Now, I use this plugin before saturation or distortion to ensure that I'm not increasing the perceivability of some of the more aggressive frequencies of the signal. So let's take a listen to this plugin. If I told you I was living, just you... Insert three is the FabFilter Saturn II which I use for saturation and harmonic distortion. Saturn 2 is an amazing plugin for saturation and harmonic generation. One of its presets has been a go-to for me for years. The tube offers unique and powerful harmonic distortion and compression. What I like to do is split the processing into three bands to give myself some more control. When the highs are a little harsh, I'll use warm tape saturation to keep them present, but to a lesser extent. Similarly, if the lows are weak, I can use the gentle saturation algorithm to make them more aggressive. In this case, I stuck with the warm tube setting. Now another thing to note is that when you divide the signal, you're no longer affecting all bands in a similar way. The modulation and filters created by the preset remain on the middle band and don't transfer over to the low or high bands. Now I find that this works pretty well since the settings are best suited for affecting the mid-range of a master. 
Lastly, the linear phase option makes the distortion more accurate, or in other words, with less unwanted artifacts. High quality introduces oversampling to avoid aliasing. Let's take a listen to this plugin. Insert 4 is soft tube tape, which I use for saturation, stereo widening, and gentle equalization. There are a lot of tape plugins out there, but this one I found subtle enough to work well for mastering. With just a little bit of saturation at tape type 2, I found that this master filled out nicely. Furthermore, I increased the tape speed to 30 inches per second for a cleaner sound, with slightly attenuated lows. This setting worked well for this mix, but I found that it's worked well for a lot of masters. In the controller section, I boosted the high slightly and very subtly increased the crosstalk. This introduces mild phase cancellation between the left and right channels that spreads the signal further into the stereo field. Let's take a listen to it. Insert 5 is the Oxford Inflator, which I used for loudness enhancement and harmonic distortion. The Sonic's Oxford line of mastering plugins have been around for a little while. Impressively, they still hold up to this day. This is especially true for their inflator. Keeping the input and output the same, I increased the effect of the plugin to around 20%. Additionally, I used band split since it preserved the high frequencies a little better to my ear. Now, if you use this setting, be sure to keep an eye on your output as it might cause increases to the amplitude and subsequent clipping. For the curve, I increased it very subtly to create a low frequency heavy tone, but try negative curves for a more subtle effect with slightly more harmonic distortion. Now, I like using this plugin after my saturation plugins, since it brings forward some of the harmonics that they created. Let's take a listen to it. For insert 6, we have the Weiss EQ1 for additive equalization. The Weiss EQ1 is a perfect addition to any set of plugins. As a line-for-line -line recoding of the original hardware, it's hard not to love how transparent this equalizer sounds. I like using the linear phase mode for an incredibly clean and smooth tone, then I'll subtly increase some of the lows, mids, and highs. There's nothing too complex going on here, we're just using a very nice equalizer to subtly increase what sounds good about the track. Let's take a listen to it. For insert seven, I use the Weiss DS1 Mark III for compression, limiting, and stereo imaging. Like the previous Weiss plugin, this one is an exact model of the digital code used to create the hardware unit. With the DS1, I'm going to use both compression and limiting. For this, I'm using safe limiting to avoid clipping and mid-side processing to compress the mid-channel, in turn making the sides more pronounced and increasing the stereo width. I achieve anywhere from 1 to 2 dB of compression and 2 to 3 dB with the limiter. I also use automatic gain makeup from the compressor, which I find provides a really rich and full sound. I keep my attack relatively quick at 20 milliseconds and the release between 40 to 100 milliseconds. Lastly, I reduce the output gain because we have one more step to complete before the master is done and I want to avoid clipping. Let's take a listen to it. Our last insert is the FabFilter Pro L2, or the Oxford limiter, used for limiting and setting the output. Although we've already limited with the DS1, I really like the sound of combining two limiters. 
This way the processing can be split between the two and you can get the timbre of both. I like the transparency of the FabFilter L2 for this, especially on the modern setting, which is a great option for avoiding distortion. Using a little look ahead, oversampling, true peak detection, and lowering the plugin's output to compensate for gain changes during encoding is also a good idea. The Oxford limiter, on the other hand, has a more powerful sound, slightly warmer and a bit more pop-centric. The enhancer slider sounds like the inflator and pulls some of the lesser heard details forward. The auto comp ensures that clipping distortion doesn't occur, but it doesn't hurt to lower the output level a little as well. Lastly, I don't like to use a dither since it's really not necessary when using a 24-bit recording. Let's take a listen to it. An optional insert is the Weiss de -esser, which I use to control sibilance prior to distortion. For this particular song, I did use a de -esser. however, I'm showing it here after the fact because I don't think it belongs in every signal chain. This mix in particular had some harsh sibilance that needed to be handled earlier on. I put this plugin prior to the Soothe 2 to help control the high frequency range. I used a quicker attack, longer release, and used only the high pass filter de -esser. Furthermore, I kept the range smaller to avoid significant compression. Let's listen to this full signal chain from start to finish.
So these are our thoughts on what might be the best mastering chain, but what do you think? There are bound to be some steps or plugins that you use, which we didn't in this example. So let us know what we missed in the comment section below. Also, if you're an artist or an engineer, send us one of your mixes at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample of it. All you have to do is set up an account, upload the song, and we do the rest. But thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and share this video with your friends. This way we know if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Also, you can subscribe to the channel. We release three to four new videos every week, and subscribing is the best way to stay up to date. There's a comment section where you can leave your thoughts on this video, or you can make a suggestion for a future video. And again, if you're an artist or an engineer, and you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us at sageaudio.com. We'll master it for you and send you a free mastered sample. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.